Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord delivered him to his jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Ushuha, la laha aminayid. Shuha. Good evening. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are all here in this church today to celebrate or to fast, right? The first day of Ba'utha. What does Ba'utha mean? What does that word translate to? Ba'utha means supplications or requests. When we go to the Lord to ask for something, to ask for a favor. See, the idea of Ba'utha is not just to come together for prayer and fasting, but also to repent of our sins, right? To have a spirit of regret of our sin, to ask forgiveness for the transgressions that we've made against God and against our neighbor. The story of Ba'utha gigs back all the way to the sixth century, right? There was a plague that hit the Middle East that lasted about four years. It was COVID-500 or whatever they called it, right? It was a terrible plague, many deaths, many sufferings that was going on in that time. It hit the poor, it hit the rich, it did not discriminate, and people became desperate. So they turned to God. They remember the story of Jonah in the Bible, where he was sent to Nineveh to tell them to repent, right? We all know the story, and we all know how Jonah did not want to do God's will. He did not want to be the chosen one to go to Nineveh to tell those people to repent. He wanted to run away from his call. So the Lord sent a big fish. It's not a well. It's not what the Bible says, right? A big fish to swallow him for three days. And in those three days, he had his supplication, right? He had his ba'utha to ask God to release him. And if he was to release him, he would do his will. And that's why God had Jonah spit out of that fish to go and to do the will of his father, right? To do what he was put on earth to do. So remember in the story, the church called for a three-day fast for the end of the plague. And the plague did end, and the church decided to honor the answered prayer of God. We had a supplication, we had a request, and the Lord answered. And how the church decided to honor that is to add Ba'utha part of our liturgical calendar. These three days that we're experiencing, my brothers and sisters, it's a season of the church. And every year, the church will fast for three days to honor what God did for our people in the 6th century, but also to remind us that God is always there. To remind us that's who we go to for our supplication. That's who we run to 
for our needs. God's mercy is infinite, my brothers and sisters. But he asked every single one of us to be merciful as well. Right? Blessed are the merciful, for the, they will be shown mercy. And we see this in the gospel today, right? The king wanted to settle his debt with the people that owed him money. So he calls in one servant who owed him 10,000 talents. He was going to put him in jail. He was going to sell him his wife and his kids and everything he had so they can pay back what was owed to the king. And by law, he had every right to do so. But the king forgave him. The king had mercy on him. Right? That same servant went and found another servant who owed him a hundred denarii. Just for context, a talent is about 6,000 denarii. So 10,000 talents equal to about 60 million denarii. A denarii was a day's wage. If you worked for one day, you were paid a denarii. So that man owed him 100 days worth of wages while he owed 60 million days. There is no way he can pay this back. I mean, we see the disparity between the two, right? It's not even close. It's similar with us and God. So our Lord is so much greater than any finite creature, right? Our God is infinite and all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God. So sinning against God is much greater than any sin anybody can commit against us. Yet what do we do? We ask for forgiveness from him and do not return the favor when people ask forgiveness from us. Be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. And I know this is not easy. I know there are some people out there who have really hurt you, who have really hurt your family, who have caused a lot of troubles into your life. Forgive them anyway. If we expect God to forgive us, we need to turn around and forgive our neighbors. That's what Jesus is teaching us today in that parable. So let these next three days, my brothers and sisters, let our Baotha not only be a time for prayer and fasting, but a time of healing for our friends and families. Amen.